Good morning, and welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church on this, the second Sunday in Christmas. Our service this morning is our festival of seven lessons and carols, and we are so glad that you are joining us digitally as we have a small gathering of us here in person. Our service today will be this set of readings, carols, prayers, and the observance of Holy Eucharist. We are excited to have this service, and we are excited to welcome everyone back next week as we institute our safety protocols and prepare to re-welcome folks once more to in-person worship. Now let us take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds, and then I will begin our service with our opening acclamation. Please stand. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us with the brightness of the Christ light, and we implore you of your great mercy that as you enfold us with the radiance of this light, so you would shine into our hearts the brightness of your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Word was made flesh. Alleluia, alleluia. And dwelt among us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Alleluia. Dear people of God, in this Christmas season, let it be our duty and delight to hear once more the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against him until the glorious redemption brought to us by his holy child, Jesus. And let us make this place glad with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died, and especially for his church in our country and in this city. And because he particularly loves them, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as all those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother, and that the whole multitude which no one can number, whose hope in the world made and the word made flesh, and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. The Almighty Grace of God, bless us. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no help of the field, herb of the field had yet sprung up, 
for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may eat freely of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds in the air and to every animal of the field. <clears throat> but for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. And then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. The man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed.
A reading from Genesis. The serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that stands in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat it, Eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to his, her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel.
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse evil and choose the good. The word. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for who, for her who was said to be barren. For nothing is impossible with God. 
Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth 
and laid him in a major because there was no place for them in the inn. Now in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Thank you. 
reading from the Gospel of Luke. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out. This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known.
Let us proclaim our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken for the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops Michael and Marion, and for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray, tho pray for those in any need or trouble, especially for Kathleen Bayer, the Branthover family, Ellen Brewer, Kimberly Bronte, Tiana Bryant, Joe Carinci, Lois Carinci, the Cheney family, Aaron Cherian, Carl Cutright, and Dale Cutright, Arzu Yonk Endelman, Jonathan Endelman, Audrey Engstrom, Carol Goodman, David Goodman, Michael Greenstein, Jeff Hoffrichter, Rafaela Martins, Carolyn Mills, Steve Mullen, Ruth Partlow, Benjamin, Benjamin Rainey, Bartolomeo Torres, Danilio Torres, Ulchi Torres, Victor Torres, the Torres family, the Torosi Groton family, especially Cade and Shay Groton and John Ward. I ask your prayers for all who are affected by COVID-19 and its variants. More than 285 million cases worldwide, more than 5 point, point million deaths worldwide. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Kathy Gearing, Terry Smiley, and Ruth Westfall. Pray for those who have died. God, the brightness of faithful souls who brought the Gentiles to your light and made known to them who is the true light and the bright 
morning star. Fill the world, we pray, with your glory, and show yourself by the radiance of your light to all nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most my we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I now invite you all to join with me as we pray our prayers for anniversaries, birthdays, those who are traveling, and for peace. We begin with a prayer for those celebrating anniversaries. Let us pray. O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray for those celebrating birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praying for those who travel, we pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. I invite you all to stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining with us today. Thank you for joining with us digitally as we continue to figure out how to navigate this
complex situation with the Omicron virus and the increases in cases that we have seen both around the country, around the world, and here locally in the D.C. region, as we have unfortunately been one of the epicenters of this new strain of the virus. Um, that being said, however, we are uh, happy to announce and note that we will be able to regather in person next week. Uh, the wardens and I and the worship leadership team, after consulting experts in the field and having long discussions amongst ourselves, discerned a way that we can regather safely. Uh, you'll have a note if you look at the newsletter or uh, some of the specifically targeted emails that we've announced. Um, the, the kind of protocols that we're going to put in place for regathering. There are basically five major pieces, and I just want to note those quickly. One, we're going to continue requiring masks, um, but we strongly encourage folks to wear uh, N95 or KN95 masks, and we've actually been working to acquire some so that uh, you can have them, if, you don't, if you're not able to find them, we'll have some on hand here in the church. Um, and one other quick recommendation, these didn't get into the announcements, but uh, the, one of the experts I've been talking to, who's a friend of mine, recommended get a uh, paper bag, like your old lunch paper bag, and after you wear it each time, just put it in the bag and let it kind of sit in there. And that's actually a safer way of storing it, and it helps to kind of keep it as clean as possible. And then you can wear it for a few weeks at a time, as long as you're not doing anything heavy exertion-wise, you know, running laps around the gym or something in it. Uh, you should be able to wear it for a few weeks. Um, otherwise, uh, after the masks, we're going to be reinstituting some physical distancing, uh, so we'll have that going on as well, uh, and the spaces in the pews will be marked out. We're also going to go back to sign-ins, um, and we're going to have the realm set up for those who are members of the parish. We strongly encourage you to sign up ahead of time so that we can expedite the process of getting people in. But for visitors, for folks that forget, you can still come. Uh, we'll have a sign-in on hand, but it will just take a little bit longer. So we, we really encourage folks to sign up through realm to help keep that social distancing going. Um, and then we also are strongly encouraging folks that do come to worship in person uh, that you not only be both vaccinated as, uh, with the two shots, but also boosted uh, if you haven't had your chance to get your booster yet. So we very strongly encourage folks being fully vaccinated and boosted. And then finally, uh, if you are worshiping with us online or continue to worship with us online, uh, I will be offering times uh, specifically on Thursdays, um, and then also uh, I'll plan to be here early enough on Sunday mornings that if you need to come on Sunday morning before the service starts, you can do that as well. But I will have uh, pre-consecrated hosts available uh, for pickup so that you can participate from home in the Eucharist if uh, you're not able to worship with us in person. Um, so we are kind of instituting those protocols, and we feel that by doing that, we'll be able to safely regather uh, until things begin to go down again, and we can kind of go back to a, uh, a, a little bit more normal of a practice, as it were. Um, of one other note in the newsletter, uh, and I just want to kind of put this on your radar, the women of St. Anne's are uh, having their yearly retreat still on February 24th, that Friday. Uh, and it will end beginning that Friday, and then it will end on Sunday, February 27th after breakfast. Um, and they're going to be at the Memorial House in Delaware, which is just a few blocks from Rehoboth Beach. Uh, so it's 285 for the weekend. There's information in the newsletter about how to sign up, or you can reach out to Lynn Fleming if you have any questions. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ your only Son to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness of love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and the words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Anne, and all your saints, we may enter into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, 
and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. And I invite those of you who are joining with us digitally to pray this prayer for those worshiping at home. Please join me as we pray together. Dear Lord, help me to remember past celebrations of your Eucharistic feast. Reanimate in me the feelings and desires that make this experience a sacred and abiding one. Thank you. 
who are gathered here in this space together, for those of you worshiping with us from home, I invite us all together, together as we pray the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take on our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven and earth and earth to heaven, give you this peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. <laughs> 